that on? It's on? There we go. Good afternoon, everyone. And why? I want to start by saying I pray that the Lord Jesus will bless each and every one of you that's come here today. song coming up. My wife and I are humbled by the effort and expense and the time and everything that's went into you people coming here to support us. And I can tell you that if you don't believe in the power of prayer, you're looking at it. I can honestly feel the prayers of the saints from around the world. We've received so much support and so much love and you know, I, if I ever have the opportunity to be a help to someone in the future, I have a whole new perspective on it because it really does make a difference. And I just want to tell you that we sure love and appreciate each one of you, Levi's friends and our friends. And, you know, I heard that Levi's whole class is here and the teacher too. And I... I just am totally not surprised, but overwhelmed by the effect that my son had on so many lives. And I just have to give all the credit to Jesus Christ. You know, someone asked me the other day, you know, how did you do that? You and Mindy, you seem like you raised such good kids. And I said, you know, we didn't, we didn't have anything to do with it. I said, for me, my testimony is the only thing that I know is that if you want to raise good kids, fall in love with Jesus Christ. Because when you do, they will too. And they can see that genuine love. They can see that your kids can see through you. You know that. So I just thank you. Oh, I had so much I wanted to say. You know, it's like when your son is taken, you want the world to know what a special person he was. And I'm just kind of a mess because I had a few days, it seems like all that we've been doing is spending time together and weeping together and praying together and singing together and worshiping together. And so when it came to trying to figure out what I was going to say, all I have is a whole bunch of sloppy notes. And so I might be kind of scattered. I certainly wanted to take a moment to remember my precious friends, the parents of those who left with my son at the same moment, my precious brother Tom and sister Leah, brother Dennis, sister Louisa, and the parents of Sabrina in Germany. You know, we uh, cannot comprehend a tragic event of this scale. All as I know is that God has a grand design. And I believe with all my heart that good is going to come from this. It's a promise. And not only good, but I believe four times good. And we've already seen that. We've seen things come in from all around the world, how that young people are rededicating their lives to the Lord. I heard how a family that had been away from the Lord and hadn't been coming to church for quite some time called the pastor the other day and said, you know, I'm coming back to church, I'm bringing my family, and I want to be rededicated to the Lord. So we've heard reports from literally all over the world of young people, and, and you know, it's... It's so fitting because if those of you who knew my son knew that his desire was to be an example and to be a help to other young people. And as you will probably hear as we go along, he spent much of his time seeking the one out that maybe wasn't as popular or was having a tough time. And he would spend time with them encouraging them and helping them. And so it's fitting that, 
you know, that Samson, you know, he took more with him in his death than he did in his life. And my son is also in his death now. It seems like there's so many people that are being helped and because of it, not just my son, but there was four beautiful, beautiful young people. And it's just a miracle we see that God has been each one of those lives over the last period of time has been making them ready for this. You know, we hear stories now. We know even in Levi's life, things that happened that caused him to want to be more rooted and more grounded in the Lord. And I believe that he's been getting ready for this his entire life. thank the musicians. I know that they were up here and I think most of them are, or if not all of them, are Levi's cousins, all of them. And I was thinking, you know, Levi loved to sing. I don't know, many of you might know that, but I don't know what happened, but the singing gene seemed to have skipped over him. He loved to sing, but he couldn't hardly stay on tune. But it didn't bother him. He took a singing class at the college. He stood up in front of the entire class and tried to sing. He would sit beside me in church and listen to me harmonize and try so hard to understand how it was done. But we were saying that uh, he, uh, he loved to hear Johanna sing. He would send us audio clips on our family's WhatsApp all the time and say, you got to hear this, you got to hear this. And Johanna would, would sing a song and you'll get to hear a little bit of that. But I believe with all my heart, I know that he's walking hand in hand with Johanna down those beautiful paths with the birds flying from trees to tree and they're singing. They're singing, I know they are. I said there's so much that I wanted to share when you re when you go through something like this it uh, you know everything you see brings back a memory or something that you want to share but in the end it's not enough time to do that I could stand here for days and tell you how proud I am of my son and how thankful I am to the Lord God for his life I will say that as I was mentioning earlier, he felt like it was his desire to do what he could to help other people, especially those that were struggling. And I've heard so many reports of, of you people and the kids. The, a lot of his hockey buddies are here and, and a lot of his friends. And, you know, they would, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, they say, you know, Levi would walk in a room and it would just light up. There's only one way that can happen. There's only one person that can cause that, and that's Jesus. But I wanted to read you, you know, we find uh, they, he's been in Tucson attending school down there, the PTA school, and he's been staying with my sister and, and my brother-in-law. And he uh, had on, he, they brought me out of his out of his room some different things and one of the things they brought me was uh, a, a, a devotional journal that he had gotten from one of the Christian camps that he had attended and I didn't know that he was doing a study through that I know that he was but anyways it was so precious because he had note, written notes in there and the dates that he had done the studies and some of them were for just just you know just weeks ago and so, you know, as my greatest desire is to know that he's safe and sound and happy in the presence of the Lord, because I know that's where me and my wife and my kids are going. And many of you, I pray all of you will be there. And if you're not going to be there, Levi's going to be really disappointed. And so I wanted to read you one of the things that, there's many of them, but one of the things that spoke to me, he didn't even know what he was highlighting when he highlighted it. 
He didn't know what he was saying when he wrote the little note underneath it. But one of my favorite quotations from a precious brother, he said, in this, quoting the scripture, he said, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. Then you were in God, the word, the part that you're to play that was in God's before the foundation of the world. He seen you, he knew you, he predestinated you to it. And so in the, in the, underneath, he, he wrote, what a thought to know. This is Levi wrote this, he said, to be a, what a thought to know the part that you're to play was in, was in God before the foundation of the world. He said, thank you, Jesus, for choosing me to live for you in the hardest stage. And I just wanted to say that I had text one of his very best friends, and I think it's on the board back there if you get a chance to read it, but Andy had written him a special text and uh, and I wrote Andy back and just said that, you know, Andy, the main thing Levi would say is, you need to check up, get right with God, because I want you here with me. And Andy wrote back and said, that's exactly what he would say. There's only one way to get there my precious friends. It's by the blood of Jesus. No matter where you are in your life, this life is short, you know, we're wondering, well, to do something like this, to take four beautiful children at the same time, it's gotta be some sort of a wake up call. You know, we don't know with the world and condition that it is, our lives could be changed as we know it in the morning. And I, I believe that, and I pray that it is for the people that this has touched, that you won't ignore that touch in your heart and that it will cause you to think about where you will be spending eternity. We know where Levi and Johanna and Jonathan, Sabrina are. We know where they are, without a doubt. But I pray that you might check up in your own life and don't let this event be in vain in your life. Take this event and use it to really check up and say, Lord, where am I gonna be? Any of us could go. These four young children, they didn't know. None of us have a promise for tomorrow. So we need to ask ourselves, what if I die in a plane accident tomorrow or in a car accident? Where am I gonna be? Do I know Jesus Christ personally? I would, I would just say, please, please, on Levi's behalf, don't ignore that feeling in your heart that this brings and use it to secure your eternal destination. I guess that's all I had to say. I sure appreciate every one of you coming in. I just love the Lord now more than I ever have. He's given me the opportunity to know Him in a way that I hadn't known him before. As the great comforter, as the one who binds up the brokenhearted, he's put his spirit in me and he's anchored it so deep that there's nothing that can move it. I told the devil the other day, I said, you go ahead and jerk on that chain. It ain't, it ain't, the anchor ain't moving not moving at all. I know my Redeemer liveth. God bless you.
It's just what's on my heart, and I believe that it's what Levi would want me to say. I was wondering if we could stand together, and I'd like to open with a word of prayer. Let's just pray together. Lord Jesus, I pray that I have expressed to these people, Lord, the things that I know Levi would want to express, and certainly the things that you would want said, Lord. Father, it's a grieving time, and as humans, Father, we're just so broken because we're going to miss him. But Lord, as a parent, I know that he's safe and he's happy. He doesn't have any more trials. He doesn't have any more tests to take. He doesn't have any more work to go to. He doesn't have anything but bliss, Lord. And as a parent, my, what more could I want for my child? Father, I love you. I love you more than I ever have. And you your word is so real to me, Lord. Now I realize that promises that I've read in the past, they're new to me now. They have a new significance. Lord, I sincerely pray that you will prick every heart in here, Lord, today. And that you, Father, would be glorified and lifted up that there would be lives changed because of this, Father. And that I pray every last one here, Father, would meet us all together on the other side. Lord, in what could be a short amount of time, looking at the world and its condition. I love you, Lord. I pray you be with all the parents that are so affected and broken, Lord. I know that you are the great comforter, and I, I, I'm a testimony, Lord, that I can just feel the prayers of your people and the love. It's just, it's just boosted me, Lord. Father, I would say as a great man in the scripture, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Levi loved to sing, and I wanted to sing a couple songs in his honor. I wish he was here to listen, to, to try and to try and harmonize. Amen. I believe that, Brother Jim. You know, we're told that they can look over the banister. And I believe that. Brother Branham said that when you speak of them, they come near. So let's maybe join together in a couple of songs. Lord, you are so precious. i 
about his love. Think about his goodness. Hallelujah. Think about his about every song that we'd sing, he'd say he loved it. So it was really hard just to pick a few, but another entry in his journal, you know, he said, Lord, help me to take up my cross every day and follow you. You know, we all fight a battle. Many of us have different battles, but I would tell Levi continually, Levi, fight the fight. You know, for so many young people, they they say they want to fight, but they don't really fight. But you can't really win if you don't fight. So if you have something that's holding you back in your life and preventing you from living the life that you feel like you should live before the Lord, you know, just take those promises and tell my kids, those are our weapons. Get those promises out of the scripture and every time the devil comes and beats you over the head, you beat him right back. You say, it is written. He promised to give me the power to become his child. He promised to fill me with the Holy Spirit. He promised all these things for us that we could fight the way Jesus fought. When Jesus told the devil, it is written. So let's sing this song, one final song. God bless you all. Take up your cross. Take up your cross, follow Jesus, take up your cross every day. some people standing and the Wallace family have 
for generations have been given to hospitality, and we just hate to see that. But there is seats in this. There's probably 50 seats over here. We'd really love for you to be seated. There's a, a lot of memories of Levi that we're going to share, and it's going to take a long time, maybe. <laughs> but if you, sure, there's lots of seats. When I came in the building, I thought, my, there's not going to be enough seats here for the people, because it looked like three or 400, but it's very deceiving. We counted them. There's 800 seats in here. So thank God for all the show of love from the saints and from friends, and God bless you richly. So I've been asked to, or honored by Bruce and Minnie to have a part in this service. And, and I remember watching Anne of Green Gables with my daughter, and I cried like a baby. And so I'm thinking, how do you do? How do you do? So I think not just me, but there'll be a lot of long pauses from different people, and you'll understand, I'm sure, in that. This is the first time we've gathered together with all the families, the neighbors and the McGarrys and the Wallaces, and, and Sabrina's family, of course, isn't here. They're in Germany, but there'll be other memorial services Saturday at 1 o'clock for our precious friend Jonathan in Flagstaff. Another service in Canada for Johanna. And in Germany, a service. But today, this course is dedicated to Levi's life from this community and from this area. So we'll be honoring his life today here. Uh, my brother Jason has the eulogy to read if he'd come. Thank you again, like Bruce said, for coming. Everyone, everyone made a sacrifice to be here, and it's just such a blessing to to see the support. And I was asked last evening to to maybe do a eulogy, just a brief recap, kind of overview of Levi's life, and and I'm not the right person to do that because I'm not much of an orator, and so I've got some notes down, and and hopefully I can get through it. Um, but yeah, it's just. It's great to see y'all, and I was <laughs> I was especially impressed to see all every, his teammates in their jerseys. Sure. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. That was just that's neat to see. Yeah. Thank you. This is a there's there's people coming up who are going to give their personal accounts with Levi. You know, a lot more uh, in depth and, and touching stories. This is this is more along just a, a format style. So. So we'll go from there. Levi Michael Wallace went to be with the Lord on July 20th. Levi is 23. He was born February 16th on 1991, the son of Bruce and Mindy. Levi attended the Prescott Christian Academy from grades one through seven, and then he went to Prescott High School, and he graduated from there in 2010. He's currently enrolled at the uh, Pima college in Tucson, and he was studying to be a physical therapist. He uh, took the state boards and passed those last week, I believe, and he was graduating uh, next month on the t August 22nd. Levi's a happy, loving, and caring person who always had a smile. And I know if you guys knew Levi, that was one of his trademarks, was sure. a smile. Yes. So he always had a hug to offer. And then for myself, he always imprinted on me the, the Levi head flow, I call it, where he'd, he'd go like this all the time. <laughs> and it's just, whenever I think of Levi, that's, I just start going like this too. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I don't know if he learned that from skating as a young kid or what, but you know, just, just something I think of when I think of Levi. He'll be remembered for his kind, gentle, and uplifting nature as one who was never braggadocious, but he was always humble. He loved God with all his heart. He was faithful in worship wherever he was. He loved kids, said he was blessed to have a little nephew, Lincoln, 
and was also looking forward to meeting his new niece, and that's Rylan after his graduation in August. He said he was, he was looking forward to getting together with her, so that'll be coming up in the future. Yeah. Yeah. He had also met God's will for his life in the young lady Johanna and was looking forward to planning a future together. Johanna and Levi entered their eternity together at the same time. Levi's family included grandparents Laverne and Linda Wallace, grandparents Joe and Donna Birch, sister and brother-in-law Emily and Aaron Palmer, sister and brother-in-law Allison and Daniel Thompson, sister and brother-in-law Lydia and Skylar Hansen, his little sister Alana, his niece Rylan Palmer, his nephew Lincoln Thompson, and numerous uncles, aunts, and cousins. Quite a few of those. Levi's choice of, of sport was hockey, as you all probably know. He won con countless awards over the years. Um, and Bruce always said that some of his best memories with Levi were in the car, traveling and talking, being able to spend time with Levi, yeah. just talking for hours and just whatever during traveling to, to games and traveling to tournaments. And I've never been much of a sports guy, but that, to me, that would make it worth it <laughs> yeah, sure. to have that opportunity. Sure. Uh, he, like Bruce said, he liked playing guitar. He loved singing, spending time with family and friends. He enjoyed sharing his life, and he always had the smile. So I have a quote today for Levi, and and based on his optimistic attitude, it says, don't cry like it's over. Smile because we shared. Yeah, sure. And then I'll close with Matthew 25, 21. Scripture says, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Sure. Thank you all. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would just give you the liberty that it's okay to laugh. You don't sometimes don't know what you do at a funeral, but I realized that just well, we haven't been in these shoes, our family, very much, but just in spending time with Bruce and Mindy the last week, and I think God's made it that way because you can't always cry, and you can't just continually grieve and just even being with Bruce and Mindy in one minute, they're laughing about a memory of their son, and the next they're just shaking and weeping, you know, so it kind of goes in waves, I've noticed, it's kind of goes like that and I think God's designed it that way because I don't think you could just take all grief so there's going to be humorous things we'll hear today about Levi and little video clips of his wacky humor and it's okay for you to laugh too so I wanted to give a tribute to Bruce and Mindy and I've seen the same in the McGarry's and the neighbors and but of our faith in action and I think to me, it's just a beautiful thing because they say talk is cheap, and that's a saying in the world. And, but we were Sunday night over there with Bruce and Mindy after the accident, and we stayed till just close to dawn. And, and that whole evening, I never one time heard them ask why, never one time heard them question God, never one time heard them charge God foolishly. It's complete, such a complete rest, and Bruce saying, that he said, in God's economy there are no mistakes. So they had that rest, and that's a great benefit of the Christian life. Without Christ you don't have that. The people oftentimes get bitter and angry, and why? And, and to see that in action, faith in action, beautiful thing was to me like a modern day. We have the example in the scripture of Job that we got. To me, I get to see that in each one of these families today. You know, Satan said to God, I'll make him curse you to your face. And God had confidence in Job and he gave him lots of rope, didn't he? He was able to take all of his wealth and his sustenance and his animals and finally to take the lives of all of his children. And then I can imagine that the devil was sitting there waiting because he'd done all that God had given him allotment to do. And I can just picture him waiting just 
to hear Job curse God because he had confidence that that's what would happen. But what does the scripture tell us? It says that Job rent his garment, fell on his face, and what? He worshiped. <laughs> he said, the Lord gave, the Lord taken away, and blessed be the name of the Lord. And I've heard that statement from these families, you know, from Bruce and from Mindy. And, uh, tremendous. When John was in prison there, you know, and he's, Brother Graham said his eagle eye got filmed over, and he started, to, he didn't know what God was doing. He was rotting in the Roman prison there, and, and, uh, Christ sent him these words, you know, he said, the blind see and the lame walk, and he said, the final thing he said, and tell John, blessed is he who's not offended in me. John didn't understand, we don't understand these things. So in all of our lives, there's things we don't understand, but I would say, Bruce and Mindy, blessed are you. Dennis and Louisa, blessed are you. Tom and Leah, blessed are you. Blessed are you when you're not offended in him. In what God chooses to bring into your lives. I have an email here that I think so beautifully puts into words what Bruce and Mindy were expressing. Uncle Paul and Sarah Levi's cousin are going to sing a song the anchor holds brother Paul God bless you my precious brother thank you so much for taking the time to send this note of encouragement to us our hearts are broken but the anchor is very deep I keep thinking of that song we'll talk it over in the by and by Levi was a beautiful son to us he was my best friend it was him and me Bruce just had the one boy Bruce and Mindy the four girls which told me that since six years old, Levi said, Dad, when I get married, you're going to be my best man, right? And it was still stood that way, and Bruce was looking forward to that in the very near future, standing up with Levi as best man. The Lord gave us a wonderful 23 years together. I don't know why he had to leave so soon. His greatest desire was to live for Jesus and to be an encouragement and example to other young people. The Lord must have a tremendous plan to take four beautiful spirit-filled young people at the same time. We'll miss him more than I could ever express. He was such a light. But God doesn't make any mistakes or show up late. He does everything perfect. We love Jesus more than ever and know without a doubt that he loves us and is hurting for us. We sincerely pray that maybe from this tragic event will come so much good rededications, young people realizing how quickly we can face eternity, unity among some of God's children. I'm believing for much good. It's a promise. What's the promise that they're referring to there? That's Romans 8.28. We know that all things, all things, work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Paul. Here's that statement at the beginning of that message again. Our hearts are broken, but the anchor is very deep. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Anchor 
so religion or I hope so God that ain't the quote that's me (laughs) I'm glad of that it says here let the great chain of your family be hooked together link by link and let every spoke be in the wheel And then when we sit down with our families and groups across the canopies of eternity, what a day that will be, then we'll understand. We have some um, special memories to be shared, and I thought maybe we just take the first five, and then there's a little video intermission or not intermission, but presentation. But I thought maybe the ones that are going to speak, I'll call your names, and I thought maybe you could come to the front left here so that you're able to just come quickly to the platform instead of trying to filter up, and that would be uh, Jeff Anderson, Adam Olson, Andrews, sorry, Jeff Andrews, Adam Olson, Isaiah Newman, Zach Mabes, and Caitlin Peterson. I wonder if they could all make their way up to the side over here. Either side would be fine. Five minutes or less. (laughs) So we're going to pull your coattail if you go over five minutes, Bruce just said. You can say a lot in five minutes. You really can. If you've ever done it, stand there and talk and time it. uh, You're going to hear mentioned several times today William Branham or Brother Branham and so there'll be There'll be quite a few of you that wonder, is that, you know, Levi's grandfather or some special relative? So I just would just mention a couple of things just so you know who we're talking about. But, but William Branham was a gospel preacher, full gospel preacher, and uh, born in 1909 in Kentucky and passed away in 1965. And since the time of the apostles, I don't know of a man more sovereignly used of God. We've had a lot of great men, but this one ranks right there. Since the days of the apostles, supernaturally vindicated by God with many infallible proofs. And so a lot of the people here in our family, his ministry had such an influence for three generations in the Wallace family. And a lot of the people here have the same testimony. And so we're... A lot of his sermons we have in print, and so we, we like to look for little gems and, and quote them. And you'll be hearing some of those quotes today, and I'm going to read you one right now. <laughs> Brother Random was preaching a little Garnet Peaks funeral. He was 18 years old when he died. And he says, I haven't tried to say too much about Garnet. He's a Christian. His own life tells what he is. <laughs> but the thing I've tried to tell you, loved ones, that he shall rise again. This is not the end. There's a guarantee written out by the blood of the Son of God that he'll rise again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Jeff, God bless you where you're at. This was Levi's hockey coach, and he's part of the Prescott Fire also. These little lapels, the number 11, that was Levi's jersey since he was six years old. He always had the same number. And there's quite a few of them in the foyer, and we'd love for you to take one with you as a little memory. They were handmade by his Aunt Christine. So, Jeff. Good to 
see it. The agony of defeat is the fuel that enables victory. And while it's sometimes easy to focus on the agony and the pain associated with loss, it's not how we want to spend our time. And it's definitely not how Levi would want us to spend our time together today. Levi, Levi would want us to celebrate life and living because that's what he did. He lived and he lived life to the fullest. And for those that were fortunate enough to see him through the lens which I did, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You see, as his friend and hockey coach for the last 15 years, I had the best ticket in the house. Yeah. And maybe more so than anyone else, I had the unique, fortunate, and often awestruck pleasure and honor to watch him as a person and a friend, to admire his many talents, to laugh with him, to learn from him, and to cry with him during some of the most rewarding and memorable moments in our lives. I stand before you the luckiest person in the world to have experienced the things I saw from this kid. You see, it didn't matter what time of day it was or the distance that we had to drive, whether it was for practice or on game day, we both looked forward to going to the rink. And the irony of it all, and one of the things that I admired most about Levi was the fact that he knew from an early age that it was never ever about hockey. It was about living, and it was about family. To us, it was more than a game. It was about integrity and sportsmanship and kindness and respect. It was about friendship and teamwork and leadership. It was about faith. It was about living a life of choice. It was about living a life of purpose. To us, it was a purpose-driven life. One of our favorite quotes, which I would throw around on a regular basis was, do you play for the name on the front of your jersey? Or do you play for the name on the back of your jersey? And there was never a doubt about it. Levi Wallace played for the name on the front. He played for me, and he played for his family. He played for himself, but most importantly, he played for his teammates, who many of which are here with us today. And he played for God. And he played just to play. As I would pace the bench, arms crossed, my smile nowhere to be found, I would ask in a sarcastic yet familiar tone, which the boys were accustomed to, who's ready? All right, who's ready? Yeah. And the one and only guarantee each and every time would be from Levi. Yeah. I'm ready, coach. I'm ready, coach. Coach. Coach Jeff, I'm ready. And, his, and when his number was called, and he got out there on the ice, well, you know the rest of the story. A contagious attitude, and a genuine and selfless human, who had more assists than goals at his peak. A fierce yet kind competitor, who delivered with an unforgettable smile and a handshake, whether it be in the thrill of victory or in the agony of defeat. 
As he jumps the boards for one last shift, I close my eyes and am reminded of the lyrics from a favorite song familiar to our locker room. There goes my hero. Watch him as he goes. There goes my hero. Ordinary. Levi was an ordinary person who did extraordinary things during his time with us here on earth. Levi, our captain, for you, my friend, the game has just begun. So grab the shovel, lace up the skates, and throw on that familiar number 11 and get out to the pond. For there's still lots of work down here to do. We love you and we miss you. Levi's friend from school days? Uh, just, yeah, friends okay. from Tucson. Thank you. So I didn't really know where to start, but I found a quote from Brother Branham that I think says a lot about Levi. It says, Brother Branham talks about how people have a certain atmosphere about them that draws you to them. Brother Bram says, was you ever around someone that you just love to be around? Did you? Did you have those people? What is it? It's because of their atmosphere that they create around them. You've been in nice people, but yet you couldn't stand to be around them. It's their atmosphere. It's love. Love goes out deep. It goes, does great things. And Jesus Christ is the love of God. It says, now, if there ever was anybody who was an example of being filled with the love of Jesus Christ, it was Levi. He trusted in the Lord for all things, and no matter what got thrown his way, trials big or small, it never shook Levi's faith that everything was in God's hands. I'm sorry. <laughs> Levi was my best friend, and I just have a little story that makes me smile and reminds me of some of our good times together, so. <laughs> Levi had, and I had planned a trip this past February for his birthday weekend, and no, nothing really went as planned, but that didn't get Levi down. It was actually Valentine's Day, sure enough, but we decided we were gonna go up to Phoenix and stay the night in a hotel. Levi had told me that it'd be fun to just relax in a hot tub and get some good food close by and watch the Olympics since he hadn't got to watch any of them because of studying for school. So we decided we were gonna go the next day. I show up at... I show up at his house and I pick him up and Levi says that he'll drive because I'm a, I drive to Phoenix all the time because it's where I work. So I throw my stuff in the back of the BMW he's driving and we're on our way. We start driving down the freeway towards Phoenix and everything is good, but I start sniffing because I keep getting a strong whiff of gasoline. <laughs> I convinced myself it's probably just something outside, but after a while it hasn't gone away, so I ask Levi, does this smell like gas to you in here? Levi shrugs and says, yeah. <laughs> he says, I fill, when I fill up the car with gas all the way, the inside starts to smell like gasoline sometimes. <laughs> he says, I hardly notice it anymore, but that's probably not a good thing, <laughs> and he smiles and laughs. He says, I usually just drive with the windows down and the smell goes away after a little bit. <laughs> I just kind of laughed and teased him for having to huff gas fumes while he drives, but I know he's not worried about it, so I'm not worried about it either. <laughs> about an hour and a half goes by and we're starting to get into the heart of Phoenix and Levi looks down, <coughs> looks down at his dash and says to me that the gas gauge just stopped working. 
so I don't know how much gas we have. I think I just said, uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. He just smiled at me and chuckled and said, we're good. We can just keep track of the mileage so we can make sure we don't run out of gas. I just think to myself, if he's not worried about it, then I'm not worried about it. We keep continuing down the freeway further into Phoenix, and Levi looks over at me again and says, okay, now the speedometer isn't working. <laughs> so I really don't know how fast we're going. I just look at him, and I said, uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. He just smiled at me and kind of laughed and said, we're good, we're good. I'll <laughs> I'll just keep with the flow of traffic so we know how fast we're going. <laughs> I just laughed to myself and said, okay, Levi's not worried, I guess I'm not worried. We continue down the freeway a little bit longer and the light on the dash goes out and they, Levi looks at me with a completely calm voice and says, okay, when I push on the gas pedal, the car won't accelerate anymore. <laughs> but it's all right. I just, I'll just use the speed that we have to get off the freeway at the next exit. I was like, what? But he was able to get off the freeway and we just barely got into a parking lot. Once we were in the parking lot, we called an auto zone and we found one that was 24 hours and took a cab there because we were pretty sure the car needed a new battery. Once we got to the AutoZone, Levi purchased some tools and a new battery for the car, and then we took the cab back to the AutoZone, or <coughs> took the cab back to the car and proceeded to take the old battery out. We quickly realized that we had the wrong battery for Levi's model of BMW, and Levi just laughed and said, I must have told him the wrong model of car, because my parents used to drive a different one. <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, poor Levi, this is no way to spend his birthday. But he never let, let him get him down for a second. We ended up putting the wrong battery in the car, hooking it up, and then driving to the auto zone with it. Once we got to the auto zone for the second time, <laughs> Levi looked at me and said, it's really a blessing that there was a 24-hour auto zone here that we could go to. When I look back at this moment, I can't help but think of the scripture Philippians 4.11 Not go to when I look back It's, <clears throat> it's not that I speak in respect of want For I have learned In whatsoever state I am Therewith to be content I admired that about Levi He always focused on the good and was happy no matter what was thrown his way. So we get back to the auto zone and put the new battery in, and we're excited because we're starving and ready to go to the hotel, but the guy at the auto zone tells us we should test the alternator, which we end up doing and finding out that that's the real problem. So now we're stranded at auto zone and we can't end up doing, or can't seem to find anyone to pick us up because it's Valentine's Day and everyone I knew was busy or didn't answer the phone. Levi ended up calling his friend Zach Lovell and he left a concert with his girlfriend and came and rescued us. We eventually got to the hotel after we had stopped at In-N-Out Burger, so not exactly a fancy meal, and the hot tub was closed <laughs> and we went to watch the Olympics and the only thing that was on was men's figure skating. <laughs> After all this happened, I decided to text Levi's cousin Sarah about everything that happened and how I was bummed for Levi. We couldn't do what he hoped. Sarah texted me something that didn't strike me at the time, but resonates with me now. All she said was, at least you two were together. I'm just so grateful for all the time that Levi and I had together and all the wonderful memories he's given to me. <laughs> he was my best friend in the world and he made me a better person when I was with him because of what a positive and strong Christian he was. I will miss Levi with all my heart, but I look forward to the day that the two of us can be together again for eternity.
Isaiah Newman, Levi's friend here from Indiana. Uh, the last couple days I had been reading all the posts on Instagram and Facebook of, about all the great things Levi's done for you and how he's changed your life in some way. It's really cool to see. But uh, now I want to tell you my, my stories of Levi. And I'll start by telling you how our friendship began. This is my first time going to SAS camp. I didn't know anybody. I couldn't break the ice very well. And Thursday I met Levi. And I was 12 and he was 18. Even though there was a slight age difference, that didn't really matter. It, we hit it right off. That night, Thursday night, Levi asked me to sit with him at church. And after that, every morning and night, we sat together at church. And to this day, we still sat together at church anytime we were together. If it was at church camp or when I came to Arizona to visit, we always sat together at church. Levi was like a brother to me. I always looked up to him any time I was feeling down or needed advice. He was always there. He always knew how to bring me up and put a smile on my face. He was always happy and smiling. He brought joy to everyone around him. You could see he loved Jesus with all his heart. His walk with God was so strong he had that perfect love for everyone around him. He would do anything for you if you asked. Whenever we stayed at, stayed at each other's homes, before we went to sleep, he always read his Bible and prayed with me. That's the kind of Christian and walk with God I want. Last year, it's, last year was his first time going to Stillwaters. I picked Levi up at the airport in Louisville. We were both so excited to get to camp. We just couldn't wait. We were expecting so much. We knew that when we got there, our lives will be changed. There are so many precious memories with him at Stillwaters. But I'll never forget when we left, Levi said, this camp changed my life forever. You're a very special friend to me. I'll never forget my church buddy. And it makes me happy to be able to say, I'll see you again soon in heaven. Yeah. Thank you. Zach Mabe is just Levi's friend here from Flagstaff. Uh, hi, I'm Zach Mabes. For those of you who don't know me, I am uh, the very, very goofy and very, very pale-skinned friend of Levi Wallace from Flagstaff. Um, I just... You know, when I was writing this speech, I realize I'm writing it for everybody here, but really I'm writing it for Levi. And, uh, and we had a very sarcastic relationship, so I'm really not that bad of a person, I promise. I just, we like to have fun with each other. So uh, I remember when I first met Levi, it was, at the, it was at the cabin trip up in Durango, Colorado. And, uh, and when I first met him, I thought, man, this guy's gonna be trouble. No, I didn't think that, I'm just kidding. Um, I thought, wow, this guy is so cool, so kind-hearted, and, uh, and right from then, he took me in as a brother. I didn't really know a lot of people. I didn't have a lot of friends in the church, but he took me in as a brother and, and mentored me through everything, and uh, and we shared a lot of great memories together. We did. Um, I, could, I could tell you about the time we... Uh, we made our own wildlife show out of a goat that we followed around the cabin for about 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> um, I could tell you about the time that a bat flew into the Wallace's house while I was staying there, and still one of the most traumatic experiences of my life. <laughs> um, and Levi just sat there on the piano bench, and, and this bat's just flying around his head. He's like, do you see that? The bat flew. And I'm like, yeah, get down from the bench, dude. That's probably his has diseases or something. It's crazy. But uh, I think one of the best memories that I spent with Levi, um, we went to a lake called Lynx Lake, and we just brought a couple canoes. And, and I remember we were in this two-seater canoe, and it was right after he had recently broken his collarbone. So he wasn't going to do a lot of work. And so I'm just, I'm in the front, and I'm, I'm paddling my, my little heart out. 
and I look back at Levi expecting that he's going to be doing something, and he has his oar in his lap, and he's sitting and he's looking at his stomach, and he's just poking his abs, <laughs> and he's just playing with his belly button there, and I'm like, Levi, what are you doing, <laughs> you goofball? And he just sits there, and he just sits back, and we just start laughing, and uh, I think honestly that was one of the that was one of the great qualities about Levi Wallace is that he always had an appreciation for the small moments of life. He could always sit back and, and appreciate the beauty of everything around him. I remember standing at that same lake, me and him. Um, I've never felt a connection with anybody of appreciating God's true love and true beauty through everything around us. Um, one of the, another hard but awesome quality of Levi Wallace is the kid was good at everything. Oh my goodness, he would pick up something that you were doing for years, and he would do it better than you would. And then he'd look at you being Levi, he'd look back at you, how's that? And you're just like, whatever, it was, yeah. it was all right. <laughs> Except for harmonizing, that was the one thing. He would, he would harmonize and try to harmonize, and you'd look back at me, Zach, how was that? And I'd be like, we're getting there, we're getting there, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, he also just had a knack for having, having wholesome fun, whether it was uh, we, we hung out with Jamie uh, one time and, and just spent about an hour just running and sliding on a slab of ice. We had way more fun than we really should have. It really wasn't <laughs> that, wasn't that exciting. And another time we just went over to Andy's to watch the slam dunk competition and anytime you get Andy and Levi together, you're going to be sore from laughing from the next day. I mean, you're crazy. And, uh, and the one thing about Levi that, that always just struck me, he was, people were attracted to Levi Wallace. He had such a light of God shining out of him that people just, people would be changed just talking to him. Just being around Levi changed you. And because of it, um, you know, there were a lot of, of girls, and this was back in high school, there were a lot of girls that would like Levi Wallace. And me being around him a lot, they would come up to me and say, hey, Zach, I got a question. I'm, I, they didn't talk like this. This is just how a person goes. They say, hey, Zach, how's it going? And I got a question for you. And I'm like, okay, shoot away. Well, me being me then, I was like, okay, what's up? And they'd be like, so, um, is Levi single? Like, does he have a girlfriend? Like, what's his number? And I'd be like, I don't even know his phone number. I don't know this Levi Wallace guy. I'm just and I'd go to Levi and be like, you're welcome, man. These girls, they're trouble. <laughs> and, uh, and I just, I started to wonder why, what really made Levi so, so attractive. And uh, the more I thought about it, I realized he had the purest heart of everyone I've ever met. Uh, no matter what, when you were around him, he always made sure that you were number one. He made sure that you were first. He was a true servant of Christ. And, and I don't say this with any sense of arrogance, with any sense of pride, but if there was one person that was deserving of meeting Jesus at such a young age, it was Levi. You know, when I, when I got the news that, uh, when I got the news of his, his going home party, so I like to call it, or his departure to heaven. Uh, you know, I had mixed feelings. At first, I, my heart was torn. I thought, wow, I'm gonna miss this guy. But then I realized, wow, Levi's probably looking down from heaven with that cheesy, cheesy Levi smile. He's probably saying, these people have no idea how much I loved each and every person. Each and every person he came in contact with, loved all of them. It was a blessing to know Levi Wallace, to have Levi Wallace in my life. It changed so many things about me, and, and I just, I'm so thankful to have known Levi Wallace. Thank you. This is Caitlin Peterson. This is Levi's school friend from years ago? Yeah. yeah thank you. Uh, 
I am beyond honored to be able to speak to you guys about Levi, one of my dearest friends. Um, I've known him for about eight years now, and see how my tiptoes. Um, the first time I ever spoke with Levi, I was about I was at Heritage Park getting ready to play a um, PGSA softball game for you know my team, the Cheese Puffs, and I got a call on my phone from an unknown number. I was like, oh, I don't know who this is, so I answer it, and then he's like, hi, is this Cat? I'm like, yeah, this is Cat. Who is this? He's like, it's Levi Wallace. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, uh, who are you? You know, I didn't, never met him before. He's like, oh, my little sister Banana is on your little sister's team, you know, and you, I heard you're a cool girl. And I was like, oh, well, thank you. Like, you know, of course, an eighth grade girl's like, oh, awesome, thanks, you know. And he's like, yeah, so what's your school schedule? And I'm like, what? Like, I don't even know this guy. And he was just acted like we've been friends for years. And I told him my schedule, and he told me his, and we found out that we had a class together, first period. So he's like, all right, tomorrow, meet me at school and early, and we'll go to class together. I was like, okay, you know. And then I hung up. I didn't think much of it, and, you know, I just didn't really think about it later that night. And then I showed up to school, and, of course, the first person I see from all the way across the hall is Levi. And he's like, cat. Cat waving his arm, you know, and I got to try it. I'm trying to play it cool, you know, it's my first day of high school, so I'm like, stop, you know, like, don't embarrass me, you know, and then he comes running over, and he's like, Cat, meet all my friends, and ever since then, I mean, we, we talk about that moment all the time, ever since then, we never even look back, we just were automatically best friends, and we got along so well, and I have hundreds and hundreds of memories, and when I was asked to speak, to share on one, I couldn't narrow it down, so I just narrowed it down to two, but I don't want to go over my five minutes. I don't want to go over my five minutes, don't worry. So I'm going to make them nice and short and sweet. Um, I was able to speak on the phone for hours and hours this week with um, a bunch of friends from high school, and there's one story that's always a reoccurring story that, like, that, like 95% of the people I talk to, they shared this story as their favorite one of Levi. so I thought I definitely had to share it with you guys. Um, we were at uh, Leah Rogolchek's birthday party, and uh, there's mostly like soccer girls, soccer guys there, and you know, a couple of friends, and we're all having a good time. And once the party started winding down, um, you know, more people left and whatnot. And earlier that day, um, if you guys know Christian Sidebottom, he actually had his first uh, chemotherapy treatment that morning because the cancer had come back to his leg. So he was a little, you know, he was a little down, but he's always a really happy guy. And he was like, all right, let's get out, let's get out the, um, the hair cutters. Like, let's shave my head, you know. Um, let's just get it over with. It's going to fall out anyways, you know, just kind of joking around about it. So, you know, everyone had a good time shaving his head, making it look all funny and whatnot. And, you know, he gets up, and we're all laughing and hanging out with him. And then all of a sudden, from the back of the room, Levi shoots up, and he's like, all right, I'm next, and goes and sits down on the chair. And we're all surprised because, I mean, Levi was an acquaintance of Christian. You know, they weren't best friends or have gone way back. But without even a pause, Levi goes and sits down in the chair. He sits down there and is like, all right, you know, you're not going to be alone. Like, let's do this thing. And, you know, of course, all of us girls are like, Levi, no, your hair is gorgeous, you know? Like, and at that time, he had, I, I called a skater hair phase, you know, when it came down. It was a little swoopy down here, and he'd always, you know, do those the little swoop, you know, and we're like, no, Levi, it looks so good, you know, don't do it. And he just like, was like, no, you guys, like, he didn't even hesitate. And of course, we went on shaving his head. And, and I think that that was the first time that he really touched me. And I was like, this is one of the most amazing guys I've ever met. I mean, that has to be the most selfless gesture I've ever seen anyone make. And, and after him, then, you know, a bunch of the guys went on, a bunch of the soccer team guys, but it was just amazing to me that he just, you know, was like, oh, I'll go ahead and do it. Yeah, no thought, you know, and he, I'm sure when he went to the birthday party, when he left, his, I'm sure his mom didn't think he'd come home bald. <laughs> but he did, and he didn't even think about it twice, and I think that that story shows how amazing of a guy he was. And um, the second story I want to share with you guys is just a short, it's, we, we've done a lot of crazy things, snowboarding trips, wakeboarding trips, gone to coyote games, you know, we've done plenty of fun things together, but the story that really hits my heart and one that I just always think about when I think of Levi Wallace is this one. He was a man of very many skills, like we've said, you know, you hit, like 
the last person spoke, he said, you know, you, you really give him a board, a snowboard, wakeboard, longboard, and he'll just jump on it and start doing tricks, and you're just so captivated by how he can do that. And, you know, you give him a ball, and he can do anything with it, basketball, soccer, anything. Obviously, hockey, he was amazing at. And he could play the guitar and do all these things, but the skill that impressed me most, and if you guys had high school classes with him or if any of our teachers are here, you knew that he was so good at walking in right at the bell. I don't know, I don't know how he did it. He'd always, you know, the bell would ring and he'd be, he'd be just strolling in. And I just was always, just, I didn't know how he did it. And one day I figured, it, I figured out why he was doing that. Um, we went to lunch earlier and then we had a block class afterwards. And so I was like, all right, let's head to class. He was like, no, no, I got some people to see. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you there in a little bit. I was like, okay, Levi, I'll see you soon. And that day we were supposed to meet outside of our classroom. So we're just waiting outside. And I see him all the way down at the end of the hall, like by Miss Rudinger's room, and we're all the way back here by Mr. Roush's room. And I just see him strolling down, doing, you know, his famous little bob with a pencil in one hand, you know, twirling it. And I just see him walking down, holding his little backpack. And then I just noticed, oh my gosh, he has stopped and talked to every single person. I'm like, oh my gosh. He's walking, and he goes side to side, and he says hello to every single person he's walking by with a huge smile. And you could just tell the whole hallway was lit up from side to side, just following him. Everyone was so captivated by his happiness. It was so contagious. And I think I counted, like, he did seven, like, secret handshakes. Like, I don't even, I've never even seen these people goes up and does this little, I mean, you guys know he loves those little handshakes. And he, I, when he came over, I was like, Levi. I was like, that's why you're always coming in right at the bell. I was like, I always thought you were like dilly down. I didn't know what you're doing. And he was like, yeah, I told you I had people to see. I'm like, you don't even know half of those people. He was like, and then what he said next was, it was like, it hit me so hard. He was like, what did he say? Oh yeah, he said, he said, I told you I had people to see. I said, Levi, you don't even know the half those people in the hallway. And he laughed at me and said, well, yeah, but who doesn't n love a nice hello from a blondie, eh? <laughs> and I would always, you know, tease him about how he'd say eh, but he would say it more just to, you know, just to push my buttons. But that, him saying that touched me so hard. And then he, you know, goes off and starts talking to everyone else. But ever since that day, he really taught me how to take life slow and, you know, don't rush, don't rush to class, don't rush to do anything because... Life is so short, and I know that he lived life to the fullest, and that he was such a good friend to all of us. And these, are, these little stories just scratch the surface of what an amazing guy he was. And he was always full of life and had a heart of gold. And it's, it's no surprise to anyone where that came from. He has such an amazing and godly family. All you guys are so great, and I know he loved you guys very much. May he rest in paradise. Thank you, guys. Sarah Vitazzi? Yeah, of course, of, we're, we're going to put Sarah in right now. And then we had, you know, Levi's dear friend and cousin Kevin that isn't on the list, one of his closest friends, but his, his dad is Vern, and me and Bruce got the talk genes, and Vern missed him. So I don't know, Levi said, not a chance, you know, he wasn't going to get in front of a microphone, but just a lot of other people that could have given testimony. And Sarah, thank you. We are next. Um, one of the first things I remember when I think of Levi is the way he walked. Kind of had this, everyone said, the side to side. Um, there are many times I teased him about his cool man swagger. It was ironic because Levi was one of the most humble people I ever met. He was never in a hurry to go anywhere, but determined to enjoy everything about around him. Many times on the way to class, I'd want to leave early just in case we ran into traffic. <laughs> Levi went along with it, but he never got nervous about being late. After all, if he got to class two minutes early, you were still early. So, Another unique thing about Levi was his pencil twirling abilities. He would weave the pencil or pen through his fingers, around his fingers, spin it on his thumb, and do all manner of amazing tricks. He got lots of time to practice these skills while the teachers were lecturing. 
His fellow classmates exemplified great patience at the constant clatter of the pencil hitting the desk when it spun out of his hand. This amazing ability transferred to his phone, which always had a crack in the screen from some failed attempt. As the teachers and fellow classmates in Tucson can attest to, Levi might have fallen asleep in class a few times, maybe more than a few. He actually fell asleep standing once, but he would never admit to it. He told one of the teachers he was still listening, his eyes were just closed. But his test grades proved that Levi did have superpower scholastic abilities. He was amazing. He was a real challenge to keep up with. When we started the program, Levi told me he was going to just learn enough to pass. All he needed was a 77% and he wasn't going to stress about it. Perhaps his competitive nature took over when the classwork was presented because on several occasions, Levi finished with the highest overall grade in the class. Levi was fearless. However, everyone is afraid of something and Levi's fear came in the form of our dog, Jasper. <laughs> Jasper is a grouchy, 150-pound black beast of a dog, and he loved to lay by the front door. Levi told us he used to pray every time he arrived at our house that Jasper would not be lying by the door. <laughs> One time, when it was thundering out, Jasper bolted inside when Levi opened the door. A very wet, hairy dog was on Aunt Rain's new rug. After a brief face-off, you can imagine who won, Levi called me in a panic. I suggested a few pieces of salami as a bribe. Levi emptied a good half of the package, making a trail of tantalizing salami to the front door. But unfortunately, the grouchy beast wouldn't budge. My dad arrived home shortly and dragged the dog back outside. This raised my dad to a level close to Superman in Levi's eyes. Uncle Paul is so brave, he told me. <laughs> Levi loved to play games. He was always up for a game of Settlers of Catan. He usually won too, which got really old and frustrating after a while. I started to play not to win, but try to keep Levi from winning. The strategy was not affected. He, he won anyway. Levi was such a humble person. One night he came back from Thursday night hockey. He told us, how it was really fun and his team beat the other team 12 to 3. I asked him how many goals he scored. He looked a little sheepish and said, uh, nine goals. <clears throat> Levi made everything fun. He was always up for anything, no matter what it was. He did not know a stranger and went out of his way to make everyone feel welcome. I was always proud to say, yeah, he's my cousin. And that has not changed. I'm so grateful for all the precious memories I have. A few classmates, friends, and people from the last clinical site Levi was at wrote some very nice things about Levi, and I've been requested to read them. One person said, he just had this light about him, and all the patients loved him. He touched the life of every person he came in contact with, and it was an honor to have gotten the chance to know him. Another said, I I remember so clearly his About Me presentation at the beginning of school. One of the first things he said was, I am a Christian. And I thought to myself, this guy knows. There needs to be more that stands up and declares who Christ is to us. Amen. And that's what he always did. That's who his identity was. His humor, craziness, and adventurousness, the sincerity of his heart, the wealth of his knowledge and his overwhelming kindness have blessed me in so many ways. Another friend said, I'll never forget my first time getting to meet Levi at the YF Fieldhouse, that within five minutes of talking to him, I told him that I wanted to visit Tucson. Levi, without batting an eye, invited me to stay with him, and he would check with his aunt and uncle. So kind and thoughtful of others with the spirit of Jesus Christ in his heart. That's what I'll always remember. Another one said, I am so thankful for the time we were able to spend getting to know Levi. He was so exceptional as a Christian and as a young man, a ray of sunshine wherever he went. There are no words to express all that Levi was. He lived his sermon 
freely for all to see and be blessed. I believe Levi, Johanna, Jonathan, and Sabrina are looking down on us all, cheering us on. The end is near, and we must make sure, when our name is called, to pass from this life into the next, that we are ready. I'm looking forward to seeing them all again very soon. You heard Sarah mention that Levi's been living with them. That's our sister Lorene, and Mindy wanted to, Lorene, she wanted to publicly thank you for being his second mother. Oh, she's always been like that, thank to everybody, but especially the last two years, she's been a second mother to Levi and cared for him, and she wanted to publicly thank you for that. They have a little video now that just is Levi and Johanna singing. I think it's just a little bit of a cut up, and so they're going to play that. Mindy said that uh, just Sunday passed when at this the day of the accident that I believe that they just sent you a, a message saying I I do love Johanna and we've raised our children that, that we don't take that word lightly so we don't tell so we tell them you don't tell somebody you love them unless you're confident that's God's will for your life and so they recognized it as that and that was the first time he'd ever said to them that this is a girl that he loved and that was just shortly before they passed on but here the two of them are on doing a little song here so doing that it's a magic carpet it's lovely you uh you don't want to go for a ride do you we could get out of the palace see the world is it safe sure do you trust me what do you trust me Yes. I can show you the world Shining, shimmering, splendid Tell me, princess, now when did you let your heart decide I can open your eyes Take you wonder by wonder Over, sideways and under On a magic carpet ride A whole new world A new fantastic point of view No one to tell us no See, we're only dreaming A whole new world A dazzling place I never knew But when I way up here It's crystal clear But now I'm in a whole new world with you Now I'm in a whole new world with you Unbelievable sight <laughs> Indescribable feeling She said he couldn't sing. <laughs> so the next uh, 
next people that will have come uh, to finish out the special memories would be, uh, if you'd come take a seat up here again, Zachary Lovell, uh, Daniel Thompson, Skylar Hansen, Zachary Wallace, Josh Neighbor, please. This is a little poem that Bruce had wrote. The Lord gave him a couple of years ago. He put a little sticky on here that says wrote a couple of years ago, but so much more real now. I guess we're kind of going from the roller coaster of the funny to the, to the serious. This is really beautiful here. Uh, he says he g gave me the opportunity to learn to love him for who he really is. If I had not been born a sinner, I could not have known him as my savior. If I had never been sick, I could not have loved him as my healer. If I'd never had a broken heart, I would have never known him as my comforter. Here he says, so much more real now. Huh? If I had not wept, I would not have known his compassion. If I had never failed, I would not have known him as my advocate. If I had not lost a battle, I would not have known him as my mighty conqueror. If I had not known sadness, I wouldn't love the joy that he brings me. If I hadn't been lost, I wouldn't have been found. What a great gift he has given me to know him, to truly love him, because of what he has done for me. Bruce Wallace, 2012. That's beautiful. Amen. Zachary. Um, it's, a, it's an honor to be able to stand here before you all as a friend of Levi's. Um, when I got, got the news Sunday, <clears throat> um, I, I still haven't contacted Mindy and them because I didn't want to believe it. Um, I was honestly in denial until I walked through those doors. I told Lydia, I said, there's no way that Levi, Levi's really gone, you know. When someone like that leaves an impact on your life and then they're gone in an instant, it's just like a piece of you has been taken away. And I saw everybody had been posting things on Facebook and stuff and, you know, it, it was neat to see what they all had said, you know. but. But I didn't want to post anything because I didn't want it to, to be true. So I didn't even write anything. And You know, Levi, as I said before, was one who lived for others. It was not about himself. If you were a friend of his, you were hanging out with him, he wanted everybody to know that you were his friend. He took time to introduce you to everybody. And, you know, he had a very solid Christian walk. And I believe that he's going to be there. He has eternal life. But I didn't write anything down, but I found a quote. Brother Branham says, let me find it right here. He says, he was just one man, the perfect man. He gave his life, and he made an example for you. Now, what must we do? Now, the first thing I say is, Jesus never lived for himself. His life was spent for others. That's perfect eternal life. When you say you go to church and you do good things, that's fine. But when you live your life to yourself, you have an eternal life. Eternal life is living for others. And I believe that Levi live, is gaining eternal life because of the life he lived for others. And I was a life that was affected by that. You know, <laughs> Levi was a skater and I'm not. And the first time he told me, he said, hey, let's go to... Uh, the hockey ring over here and play hockey, I said, Levi, I'm Mexican. I don't skate. Ice is not, put me on a softball field, put me on something. But don't, he said, I'll put you in, in the net, you know, I'll let you be goalie. I was the worst goalie ever. I can't skate to save my life, right? So, you know, Levi, you know, well, we get in the locker room, and all right, Zach, lay down. So they just pad me all up, and I'm waddling out to, that, to the hockey ring. He's just laughing at me the whole way, you know. But, it, but he did it in a way where, he didn't make you feel like you're worthless. He was, he was having a good time, you know. 
And, <laughs> and um, you know, Adam, he told that story. I guess I'll tell it from my side. So I'm in a concert, you know, a Southwest Gospel concert, and I get this call about 11 o'clock, and it's Levi. Hey, Zach, you know, <laughs> I'm broke down, all right? You know, I try to call everybody, and nobody's answering their phone. I said, okay. I said, you need a ride? What do you need? He's all, well, you know, and I said, well, I'm at a concert. Oh, don't worry about it. I said, no. You know, you're my friend. I'm, I'll come get you right now. So I told Lydia. She wasn't too happy, but I said, hey, I got to go get Levi. I said, Levi, where are you at? And if any of you know Phoenix, I'm at 7th Street and McDowell. I said, Levi, you're at 7th Street and McDowell. In the, yeah. In case you don't know where that's at, that's like in the middle of the hood, right? So I... <laughs> I show up, and here's Levi and Adam Olson, the two whitest boys, standing in the middle of this parking lot at 11.30 at night. I said, Levi, let's get out of here, man. So, <laughs> so we jump in the car, and we hit, we hit the road, and uh, we get to the hotel. Well, the next morning, he calls me, and he says, hey, Zach, you know, Adam, I guess Adam had a gun in his bag, and it had fallen out in my trunk. All right, I'll, I'll go take it back to you. So I pull up to the hotel, and they're over there by Cardinal Stadium, so it's a nice, it's a nice hotel. And... Um, you know, I have the gun inside. Well, there's some people sitting out. I just pull up in front of the lobby, and Levi comes out. Well, Adam also had, like, some prescription pills or something. Anyway, he had a bottle. <laughs> so we pull up, and I roll down the window, and Levi's like, what's up? You know, he come walking out with his little head bob. He's like, what's up, man? So then I was like, all right, here you go. And I pull out the gun, and I hand it to him, and I hand him the bottle of pills. All of a sudden, those people, whoop, walk right out of there. <laughs> I said, they probably think we're doing a drug deal, but... You know, you know, Levi, he was just, you know, he was all laughing, having a good time. But, you know, I saw a video of him, you know, when he was on the mission field with, I think it was Brother Jerry Paul, and he was singing that song. "Twas a tiny, simple stable, you know. And he sang that song, and he said, outwardly, I'm nothing, not much. You know, and I believe that's what he was. He was a, uh, a place that the Lord could come into and bless a lot of people, as you could see here. You know, if you didn't know Levi, all you have to do is walk in this room and see the lives that he's affected. You know, and his coach said that he made more assists than goals. And I believe by Levi playing hockey was setting him up for the greatest assist of all that happened on s Sunday night. He gave his life so that we all could come together to remember him. And it doesn't matter what church we go to, it doesn't matter as long as we believe in Jesus. We're, we're all one body. We're all affected by this. And I think that this should pull us together. And just because, you know, Levi, he didn't care what church you went to. He still wanted to hang out with you if you were his friend. And I believe we need to live more by that example. And, you know, and I know in my personal life, you know, I could, I could learn to do that more, you know. Going out of my way to, to search out the one that, that probably feels the littlest and make him feel wanted. He, he was a, Levi was a popular kid, but he took time to feel, make the least one feel wanted. And I believe that, you know, as I read that quote, by the life he lived for others, he has eternal life. And so, Levi... You know, like they said, he liked to sing, so we'd always go on card rides, and he liked to sing, you know, so we'd try to sing, and I, I used to, we used to always hang out, and it was at that time when he was in that class, and all those songs, they were goofy songs that he would have to sing in that class, but, you know, we had a good time, and I believe he's over there right now with, with Johanna, with all the other ones walking, you know, and I believe one day that we'll walk over there together, and we'll join them, you know. And Levi, keep smiling, buddy. I'll be there. Allison's husband, Daniel, Levi's brother-in-law. The girls, I hope you noticed on the program, too, each one of the girls wrote a little... Note to Levi, it's on the back of your program. They're very precious. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm not a person to uh, be up in front of a lot of people like this. I don't have very good speaking skills. But I just wanted to come up here and, and tell you all what Levi meant to me. I loved him so much. <laughs> Levi, how do I begin to tell you how much you mean to me? You were the younger brother I never had. You brought so much joy and sunshine to my life. I so enjoyed our talks about God and the fellowship we had. You always made life fun and you enjoyed life to its fullest. Levi would always build the other person up instead of himself, even though he was incredibly smart and talented in so many ways. You were so humble, Levi. Brother Branham said in the message, the unwelcomed Christ, it's great men are little men. They never brag or take honor. They make you feel that you're great. That's great men. That's exactly who you were, Levi, a great man. I know Levi's true desire was to let his light shine for God. Well, Levi, your light was very bright, and you are a true living testimony to all who knew you. It is God in you that we saw. I will miss your sense of humor so much and I have never lapsed, laughed so much around anyone, and your joy is so contagious. I will forever cherish our many happy memories together, Levi. I miss you so badly already, <laughs> and we had so many fun plans together. <laughs> and it breaks my heart that we cannot fulfill them. <laughs> I wish so badly you could teach Lincoln how to play hockey, and we will let him know of what a great uncle you were and how you loved God and put others above yourself. You ran your course well, and I have no doubt where you are. You are enjoying the joys of the Lord that were prepared for you before the foundation of the world. I know I will see you again, Levi, and someday you will come get us when God takes his bride away. I'm not saying goodbye, but I'll see you again. And until then, buddy, enjoy what God has prepared for you, and we will keep fighting the fight. I love you, Levi, and I will miss you so much. Your big brother, Daniel. Skyler. Skyler Hansen, married to Bruce and Mindy's girl, Lydia. Took her off to Canada. And bless you, son. I have a lot of memories with Levi, and I just want to, I just wrote a little something here, and just want to read it. And I met Levi seven years ago, and ever since then, I knew him to be one of the most genuine and sincere people in my life. No matter how popular or unpopular the person he was with, he would always make me feel, make them feel, way above himself. And that's how he made me feel. I have so many memories with him that I'll never forget. He loved the farming life and being a part of the harvest, running the combine. He'd always look at us in our dirty overalls and greasy beers and say, we're so legit. Playing hockey was one of his favorite things to do. He introduced me to roller hockey, the 360 Michigan, and lots of other moves. Everyone that seen or played with him knew that he had hands. Levi loved the Lord with all his heart, and he knew that because he, he was always the first in the conversation to start talking about the things of God. I was truly blessed to have him as a friend and as a brother. I know he's resting in peace up above, and I can't wait to hug him on resurrection morning. I love you, Levi. You're forever in my heart. Zachary. Levi's cousin, Zachary.
I'll try to be short and not break down. Two things that always stood out about Levi was he was so humble. And he was a peacemaker, you know. He was always always making peace and whatever was going on. And he was just simple, you know, he wasn't all complicated and he was just a simple Christian and one time we were coming back from Saskatchewan camp and I'd been playing football or something up there and I'd hurt my back pretty bad and and we were coming back and we stopped at my grandma's house and we were in in Nevada I believe and I had just been laying on the bed for quite a while just because my back was real painful and I got up to go use the bathroom and something gave out in my back real bad and I just fell down on the floor and I couldn't move and I was just on my knees and I, I, it was just very agonizingly painful and, and Levi walked in the room and then he's like, you okay? And I said, well, my back just gave out, I can't really move. And he said, would you like me to pray for you? I said, yes. And so he just walked over and he just put his hand on my shoulder and he just said a quiet, short little prayer. My back didn't bother me anymore. But it just stood out to me because it was just the simplicity of God and one of his children. Then one other thought. We went to a camp in Ohio. And after the camp, we sang a song special together. I thought about it a lot since then. And... Uh, He's the first one that actually got to do what we sang about it. I'll just read it real quick. He says, I'm going to let the glory roll when the roll is called in glory. I'm going to get beside myself when I get beside my king that day. I'm going to have the time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm going to get carried away when I get carried away. Josh Neighbor, this is Levi's cousin from Canada. For those of you who don't meet, know me, I'm Josh Neighbor, his cousin to Levi Wallace, and uh, also a cousin to his girlfriend, Johanna Neighbor. She's also a very close friend of mine. I was privileged to spend quite a bit of time with Levi and share lots of fun memories with him. The past five years or so, when Chris and I started dating and I started coming down here more, Levi was the kind of guy who was, he was just so easy to be around and each one of you here knows that. He just had such a good personality and you, could, you just get so attracted to him. He never had a bad attitude. He always just had that big Levi smile and that contagious laugh. and He could always just make you feel so special whenever you're with him. Not only was Levi a you know, complete blast to hang out with, but we could always sit down and have those good talks about our spiritual lives. And he was always a good inspiration and always very positive. I believe that he loved the Lord with all his heart, and I know he loved this message. I'm sure a lot of you know that Levi had a, a love for music. We'd always just sit down and grab the guitar and we would just sing away, and if Joe was there, she would she'd always sit down with us and sing too. And those are some special memories we had together. I believe they're in heaven now. They're you know they're singing with the saints and angels, praising the Lord. And I know Levi always wanted to sing harmony. That was always one of the things <laughs> when we'd be singing. He'd well, Josh was that harmony. How how did that sound? And, well, you know, you're, you're getting there, Levi. It sounds pretty good. <laughs> I believe he's there singing harmony right now. This past January, Levi and my cousin Sam and Aaron Olson and I, we were able to go to Hawaii together, and it was, it was an amazing trip. And I, I thank the Lord for those memories we were able to have with him there. Levi brought his 
he brought a, an island, an inside island guidebook. So he was always reading through it and trying to find all the crazy off the wall things to do and things to see. And we were just trying to make the most out of that trip, you know, with the little time we had there. And so uh, it was one of the first days we decided to go on a, it was supposed to be an easy hike, you know, not too long. We were trying to just get used to it there and stuff. And we were going to go surfing in the afternoon. So, of course, we didn't take any food with us because Levi said, hey guys, this is an easy hike, you know, it'll be pretty quick and easy. So, and we only had a few water bottles, but Levi was positive, you know, we'd, we'd be good to go. So, anyways, we went ahead and did the hike and it turned out that it, it was straight up and down the mountain. It was probably one of the hardest hikes I've ever done. <laughs> and... Uh, we didn't really eat much for breakfast either, so I mean, we were all pretty starving halfway through the, the hike, and uh, we were fantasizing about hamburgers most of the time, and you know, Levi had a strong love for hamburgers, so. <laughs> anyway, so we ended up passing a, a local island man on the trail there, and he just happened to uh, be carrying a foot-long subway sub with him, and so we we stopped and talked to him, and then uh, Levi, uh, with his impressive uh, bartering skills, he managed to trade the man half of his sub for just one bottle of water. <laughs> and uh, if Levi is here now, I think you'd agree with me that that was probably the best sub we ever had. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. One of the last memories I I shared with Levi and Joe together it was when he came up for a week this past May to just to hang out and so of course Joe and Levi they made up a scavenger hunt for a bunch of the young people for a party they were doing on Friday night and of course we all had to dress up and we went around town doing the most ridiculous things as it, <laughs> it was pretty funny so uh, me and Kristen and Joe and Levi, we were together, and uh, it was funny because me and Kristen, we spent pretty much the whole time just kind of hunkering down in the truck, hoping nobody would see us. And there's Levi and Joe running around and doing just all the craziest things. And I think they're probably one of the only couples I know that could run into a restaurant dressed up as Mario and Luigi and sing to a bunch of random people. They were just so full of life, and I know they, they enjoyed it to the utmost. And they, they really knew how to live. So, Levi, you don't know how much we're going to miss you here. You were such a bright light in my life. I loved you like a brother. If I, if I could be more like someone here on earth, you'd be that person. You're an amazing man, the very best friend a person could ask for. I know you and Joe are in a better place now. Together, we're just on a, another adventure. And my hope is in the Lord, and I know that I will see you soon. And we will have eternity together. I love you, buddy. Brother Jerry Paul, if you'd come. This is the last, what they call the last respects, isn't it, that we can show to Levi? And so for his parents, it'll be all too short this afternoon, even though it's going to get lengthy. But it, I'm sure enjoying it, too. It's not long for me, but just thank you for your patience today. I asked Mindy if she might write a little note to Seth. My son was in Flagstar in Canada. He just flew home today and went over this morning. He said Bruce was leaning over the desk writing out some notes for the program, and he thought, no dad should ever have to do that, you know. And so, Mindy's got a little ring on that came out of a gumball machine that Levi got her when he was six years old, the gumball machine ring, and she told him that she was going to wear that when he got married, for real. And she has it on today. She has this little note. It says, my Levi... I thank my God upon every, that's underlined three times, upon every remembrance of you. 
You brought me so much joy. You were always so considerate of me. You were a good son. I love you dearly, and I'm so proud of the man God made you. I will see you soon, Levi. Love, Mama. so hard to write down on paper what you think about somebody. Levi, uh, I got to admit, I didn't notice him at first. We uh, would go to the cabin every year up in Colorado, and, you know, he didn't shine that bright when you had uh, when you had Emily and Allie. They were older, and that's who I remember first seeing. And Bruce's children have been such an impact on my life and such a testimony. I always tell my wife Heidi that I want my home to be like theirs was. I want that love that they had between themselves. I want that in my home. And I've seen it. And when you see a testimony like that, it really does something for you. So Levi being surrounded by girls, the first thing I noticed was the girls there being older. And then I'll never forget, we were standing at the cabin and the kids were playing out front, and I should say young people, and playing a game and I was watching and I noticed Levi for the first time. And they were in a circle and they are all playing this game and Levi stood out. He was not only watching out for the youngest, but he was watching out for the oldest. And, you know, maybe it's something you see or recognize in somebody that he knew what was happening with everybody around him, and he was aware of it, and he was watching out for him. And I was so impressed by him and how that one person could handle so many things to see and that everybody was okay. And uh, I think later on, I don't know if it was that trip or the next one, uh, we'd go down to the bonfire, and uh, one of the evenings there, me and Levi had a chance to sit down together, and... And we got to talking about the Lord. Um, I can tell you now, I think it was his, I don't think I know it was his very favorite subject. He loved the presence of God. And any time he could get in that presence, that's what he would do. And it just started to become a thing that whenever I would see Levi, we would talk about God. And we would sit down and it seemed like time would just pass. And we'd have very, very good talks. You know, and anybody that knows me knows that, uh, my close family anyway, I'm kind of hard to hug. I don't know, maybe it's five brothers, but Levi had no boundaries. <laughs> if Levi seen me, he would just come right through that thing, you know, and you'd try and put it up a little, and he didn't care. He'd just wrap me up. And I got to where I couldn't wait for Levi's hugs. You know, he would, he would come, and he would find me, and he would just wrap me up. Well, another thing that I learned from Levi was... Uh, he would call me or he would text me. You know, and I thought this was such a testimony for us and what we should do in our lives. And he would say, hey, I'm having a rough day. Pray for me. You know, hey, I'm in a tough spot. I got this going on. Would you pray for me? And I thought, as Christians, what a testimony for us to, to say that we're not too big and we need help sometimes. So through our talks, somehow it came along that he wanted to go to Peru. He had to desire to do something in the mission field. And uh, we had an opportunity to take him to Peru. And I think it fell together, Bruce, in the last couple of weeks. Just amazing how it happened. I want to say he landed in a plane from another country and got on a plane and went with us down there. And I got to spend just a little under two weeks with Levi and watch him interact with people, watch him pray for people, watch him sing nonstop, and me and Levi had one great thing in common. Neither one of us can sing, but we really tried, and we had a great time. We were constantly, it didn't matter where we went, we were singing together, and there's one little place we went to, and the young people there in Peru, all they do, you know, we have so many things that we can go and go and be a part of. There, they just get together and sing. And I never seen somebody so happy in all my life. Levi would go from morning to evening. Matt was there to testify, and he would sing. 
and they would, all the young people would get together, they would sing, and if they left and we did something else, service, they'd come back, they'd meet after and they'd sing. And he'd play his guitar, and they had a drum set there, and they'd let him try the drum set. And then he'd try the piano, and they just did this nonstop. And I remember, uh, you know, having Levi on that trip was neat because sometimes on a missionary trip it can be very heavy, and he had a way of bringing such a lightness about it. He kept everybody smiling, you know. I thought, what do you write down about Levi, that smile? There's a thousand words that would go with that smile. It would take us all day to talk about it. It, was, it just made you feel like you were okay. And I know that I, myself, wanted to be more like Levi. He was a younger person than me, but I wanted to be more like him. And I believe that's because he had the life of Christ in him. We were, uh, and I'll stop here because it takes too long, but we were, we had just, I don't know if we'd gotten out of service, but we're in church clothes, and we had, they wanted to take us on a lake in Peru, and it was this, I think it was called the Blue Lagoon. And we get out on this boat, and we're traveling along, and there's two boats, and all the church, and all the people are together, and we're riding together in this, and we go across the lake, and as we come back, you kind of go through a channel, and this is somewhere in between Ecuador and the Amazon. It's just kind of up in the northern Peru, and very high mountain jungle area. And as we're going along in the boat, there's a really high cliff on the right, and it looks like half of a bridge coming out, and it is way up there. And I remember looking at it, and you know, I was like, wow, that, that's kind of cool, you know, and I look over at Levi, and he's just smiling. He didn't even ask me. He's just like smiling. He's looking at it and looking at me. And I'm like, we're in church clothes. And I'm like, I don't know. I guess so. So we tell the guy, he pulls the boat over there. And Levi climbs this hill up through the jungle out of the canopy and jumps off this thing into the lake. Now, he wasn't afraid to live. You know, and he, he could be happy. And he taught me as a Christian, you know, we don't, we don't need to have sad faces. Christians are happy people. You know, and Levi was a testimony to that, that you can, you can go have a wonderful life and be clean and decent and order and still have Christ living in you and make it through this world. The last thing I would say is, I hope it's okay, Bruce, but Mindy, if, I believe if Levi was standing here, he'd, he'd, he'd really be looking at all the young people out here, all of his friends from school, and everybody, and he'd say, guys, you don't know how fragile life is and how you have no control over tomorrow. You know, he'd tell you that there's not a single thing you can do about yesterday except for the choice that you make today. You know, and I believe that in his life he'd say, make sure you know who Christ is. Make sure that today you choose to put your life behind the blood of Jesus Christ. Because someday, as they say in Peru, it's so hard in, in the mission field, when you go different places, you're constantly saying goodbye. And they came up with a song that says, until. And I think that's what he'd say to us today. Until. God bless you. Amen. Brother Israel Poe. Dear friend to all the young people, dear friend of Levi's, God bless you. Well, God bless you. We just, uh, Kind of a real honor to, to be able to stand here and uh, to greet the family. Um, we had the privilege of having uh, Levi in Tucson for a couple of years, and it's just a real blessing. Just I like uh, what Zachary said that he was it wasn't complicated, free, a real nice spirit, and. Uh, he was a, an encourager. And, um, and I just want to say to the family here that, you know, that Wallace family, you, you all are really blessed. And 
and uh, I know that God has smiled upon your family and it produced Levi. And we thank God for that. Um, and we thank God for you and your testimony. And if you could, with just eyes of faith, look beyond the pain and the hurt and look into a land that we're all going to. And in that place, we know that uh, our dear friend and brother Levi is there waiting. I bless you. I just want to sing a song maybe to maybe to encourage encourage your heart. of your name every knee will bow tongue proclaim Jesus Jesus you are Savior you are Lord and you are God there is of 
provide Oh how sweet to walk in the pilgrim way leaning on his arms Oh how bright the path grows from day to day Brother Jim Dalton, these four young men and women were attended service in Flagstaff Sunday. And actually, Brother Dennis McGarry had the privilege of speaking that day, and the same day he lost his son. But Brother Jim wanted to share some of the, he had a chance to talk with those young people after for a while. Just Bruce is suggesting you all stand for a moment, just kind of change your position and shake your legs a little bit. God bless you. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You say, Brother Jim, what have you got to do with Wallace family? Well, my baby brother married one of their sisters. Uh, you want to be seated now? You can. Uh, do what? Yes, I'm going to share that with you. I, I, I think it was about 41 or 42 years ago. You know, anymore, when you get my age, things kind of run together. But uh, Brother Laverne and Sister Linda came through Prescott. I'd moved there in 62, and I can't remember what year they come. 72? Okay. My, where does time go? And we fell so in love with the Wallace family there in the park. And uh, I think that kind of when Tony and Susan hit it off first. And Brother Laverne and Sister Leonard, all the family or whoever was with them, they go back to Canada. Well, we get a call. Somehow or another, it got around that they wanted to come move to Arizona and come there and live with us in Prescott. <clears throat> so, Bill Raglan, Raglan and his wife, Mary and my wife, uh, we had a 71 company van truck. How many knows Bill Raglan? He was one of the first converts God gave me in Prescott when I moved there. And we got called on as a duty to go pick up the Wallace family. So we make a kind of a vacation, go up the coast in Vancouver, farthest I've ever been. I thought I was going to the end of the world to pick them up, up in Edmonton. Finally, we get up there and we pick the family up. And we load all the kids in the van and we have stuff packed on top of the van and everything. How many children did you have then, Brother Laverne? Jason was the baby. And uh, here this man turns me loose with his whole family. And they're going to be following us on lately, coming down. Well, when we uh, left, uh, the Lord kind of warned me, says, uh, and I told Bill, I says, let's be watching out for animals. I says, I just feel like the devil's going to try to run an uh, animal out in front of us and kill us. 
So we made the whole trip and got the family and coming back out of Canada and crossed over into the United States. It was about midnight. And I was running about 70 miles an hour with that van and all the kids in there and all the furniture. In the headlights is a moose standing in the middle of the road. I said, oh God, help us. And there was that animal that the Lord had warned me about to watch for. And his horns were facing the van. Well, you know the van, you haven't got nothing but windows up front. And I said, oh God, help us. And I knew I couldn't hit the brakes too hard because I'd sling everything off the roof uh, on the highway. That bull moose fell down just before I got there. And when he fell down, he get back up, he had his rear end turned to me. And I clipped him doing about 30 miles an hour. And how I rejoiced and praised God. You talk about a guy that's wide awake the rest of the night. That that moose had fallen down and got his antlers turned away from us. So they wouldn't come through the van. And then, but for, let me back up a little. But before I got to the border, I had all these children and we was crossing the Canadian border. And I happened to realize the parents wasn't with us. And I thought, well, man, what am, what am I going to do? So I get to the Canadian border and check us all out. And he says, who does all these kids belong to? I says, well, they belong to the Wallace family. Well, where's their parents? I said, they're following us. I didn't say two or three weeks or three months later. So they, they led us across the border. What a miracle. So I want to, I had an experience. I had a, Brother Dennis preached an outstanding masterpiece sermon Sunday on grace. And I usually try to make it my point when we have young people, visitors, because I believe God's calling a young host too. And uh, I wanted to go out and visit with them. And so I got out there and of course Levi, or uh, uh, Jonathan, Dennis and Luis's boy, uh, we've been very close the few months. He's come up and had me pray with him at church and so, and he was so sincere, wanting to be so right with God. So the last few months, the church is a witness that we spent time in prayer together at the altar, standing, hugging one another, holding one another. So I made a point after service to go out and meet the children. And I walk out into the foyer, you know, and everyone's fellowship, and there's such a sweet spirit there. And, and I walk up and I see these four children standing there. I see. Jonathan and this young man I don't recognize and the young lady I didn't recognize and another long, young lady I didn't recognize and, and of course you know preachers are real good to get their foot in their mouth and Brother Dennis is getting ready to go to Europe and so we were telling the people that uh, he's going on a missionary trip and he's got this burden and different things because I was you know, we've always supported Brother Dennis. First missionary trip in Europe I was ever in was with Brother Dennis and Heino, Brother Heino about in camp and different things. So that, that part of the country is real special to me. One of the greatest meetings I ever had with young people was in Poland. And uh, so, you know, I was kind of talking about, and I said, boy, I said, man, and when I got to Germany and ministered there, I said, boy, them people had a hard spirit. And so I go out and I meet the, I meet the uh, kids and I put my arm around Jonathan and I see this handsome blonde-headed boy standing over there. I said, young man, who are you? Uh, he says, I'm Bruce Wallace's son. I'm Levi. He reaches over and shakes my hand and hugs me real uh, 
strong. And I want you to know, I was Bruce's second dad. When we got to Prescott and the parents didn't get down there, Bruce lived with me and we had to farm the kids out. I think Jason was two, wasn't he, Brother Wallace? Three? Okay. I was close. And, and here we had a three-year-old baby, and so we had to find a place for all of them to live. So uh, the Wallace family began, become 910 West Gurley's family. And uh, so anyhow, after I, uh, Levi introduced himself, and there's this beautiful young girl there, and I said, and I said well, what's your name? She says, my name's Johanna. I said, oh my, Johanna. I said, that's the most beautiful name I've ever heard in my life. I said, if I'd have heard that name Johanna before I named my baby girl Joanna, I said, I would have named her Johanna. And so we had a, a, a lovely laugh, laugh. And so then I seen the little girl over there. And I, said, I said, who are you? She says, I'm Sabrina, and I'm from Germany. <laughs> well, I felt like a hill. I said, I want to tell you, young lady, the worst spirit in the world right now is in America to reject the gospel. And so that was my conversation with them. Well, then after I, I left and they were standing around talking to s some more of the young people, when I, if, if you see me kind of crippled around, I've got to go have a hip replacement Friday morning at 8 o'clock. I'm not going to get to be at Brother Dennis's. Brother Dennis relieved me, said, Brother Jim, you go take care of what we need you well. So I wanted to try to make it down here today for Bruce, for Johanna, for Sabrina, and Jonathan. And after I left and I was over at Brother Dennis and I was visiting with one of the young women that's a spiritual woman, and she said, Brother Jim, after you left, he said, there was an aura around those children that I saw. I want to read you something. Revelations, chapter 1. I'm having a problem reading my eyes are a little full of tears. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches to the Ephesians, Samaria, Pergamos, Tatar, Philadelphia and the Laodiceans. And then here's the other scripture. Revelations 1, verse 3. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it. Because the time is near. I believe God's going to call young people to this message. I've seen an old school die off. I can remember when we were sitting at the 
altar at the tabernacle. I was 22 years old. And you could tell when Brother Brown was under the spirit. And he turned and he pointed like this. He says, if it goes on, it'll be you young men carried on. That's 52 years ago. I want to tell you, if we old timers go home to be with the Lord, God will raise up young men to carry this word of God to the end because it can't fail. And I want to use a word that I was around Brother Branham offered on in my home several times, dreams interpreted, and he used the word uh, vibes. I only heard him use it one time in my life, the word vibes. And we was 1965, we, last hunt other than Spider Ranch we had with Brother Branham, we were standing around the fire. And if you ever want to go see that campfire and stand around the stones with me, we can still find it, okay? I've taken many people there where we hunted with Brother Branham. And Brother Branham was standing here, and Bill Ragland was standing over here, and I was standing here, and Brother Branham looked over at me. He said, Brother Jim, says, I know two old cowboys will be there. Of course, he had his wet black hat on with a red bandana. Brother Bill had his hat on. He looked over at Brother Bill, and he says, you've got good vibes. First time I ever heard him use that word. Well, I want to tell you something. Those children that I was with two hours before they went home to be with the Lord had the best vibes I'd ever witnessed around young people. And let me tell you, we all put off vibes. Let's make sure they're positive in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I count it a privilege, Bruce. He was like a son to me, Bruce. Bruce said, I'm his second dad. I could never take the per place of his first dad. So I love the Wallace family immensely. And I thought, my, how they trusted me. Almost hadn't known me no time with their whole children and their family to bring them to a place and to look after them and to care for them. Now they got a greater one looking after them, the Lord Jesus Christ. Count it a privilege to be here today. Thank you. Pray for us, Flagstaff. We need your prayers. We're looking for the soon coming of the Lord. I believe it's very near. And I want us to be ready. And I'm, I'm if you notice, Brother Branham said that in the last part of his life, that tremendous victory came in what? Love divine. And I've been asking God, bring me the place that I'll have unconditional love for his people. It's time to forget about the doctrine. We know the doctrine will hold its own. It'll stand on its own ground, but let's all go on into perfection. Go on into Christ and love one another because that's the only thing that's not gonna fail. Love will never fail. So God bless you as we, uh, these souls have been laid to rest in Christ. And I'm not concerned at all about their future. I'm looking for to meeting them in the resurrection. So, God bless you. Amen. We have a slide presentation of to thank Levi's cousins, Ryan, especially for putting together the picture that uh, starts the slideshow is the last photograph that we have of these two. And Levi sent a little, sent this out to all the family on a little connection they have, and it said, uh, about to fly. <laughs> Amen. He had unto me According to thy word According to
to thy promises I can stand secure O carve upon my heart The truth sets me free According to thy word, O Lord Be it unto me Surely in the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the rush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Sing, 
frustrated brother See how he's tried to Light his own candle Some other way See now your sister She's been robbed and lied to Still holds a candle Without a fan Blessed be 
your holy holy For all that you've given us, we bless you, Lord. And I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord. For you daily bear my burden. Your great faithfulness is my
and Saturn's rings unveil our Father as you sing, and my soul wells up with hallelujah. Oh, praise Him all His mighty works. There is. of life within my wrist A fallen snow A rising mist There is no higher praise than this And my soul wells up And my soul wells up Yes, my soul wells up Hallelujah Oh, praise Him all His mighty
I really can't say how thankful I am because I just you can see the fruits of how you the choices you guys have made and the examples you guys have set here tonight with all my family and I just know that you guys have put the message first and and that's just such an example to me that's how I want to live I pray that you'll bless and comfort these people let them know that this little boy was just set here for a sermon he's preached his sermon the book is closed but we shall see him again grant Lord that we'll all stand there in the beauty of Christ for we have eternal life. Until that time, keep us ever centered in your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you. I choose to be Why don't you stand once again and change your position? You know, you don't get a dress rehearsal for these kind of things. So we maybe didn't know it would be quite so long, but again, it's not long for the family. It's going to be too short. For... So Brother Ricardo Guterres, the pastor from Tempe, will be our last speaker. If he would come. bless you this afternoon. You may be seated. Reading from scripture. I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning those which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then, that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then which we are asleep, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I'm reading from Thessalonians. Amen. Revelations. Chapter 21. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
I will give unto him that that is the thirst of the fountains of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. The prophet of God said in Garnet Peak's funeral, he said, we have this afternoon something that's not welcome anywhere at any time, no matter how prepared we are for it. It's always an unwelcome guest that's sure to come to everyone. And it's heartless, and I'm sure if I had been a death, I don't think I would want to come to a home as this that death has come to. This young Christian that we have as we know him as our brother Levi. And we're here today assembled to pay our last respects to this young, gallant Christian. It's the last thing that we can do for him upon the earth. We must meet that someday. We've got to meet it, young or old, sooner or later. It will come to all of us someday. The sun says that Levi will rise again. The flowers say he'll rise again. The word says he'll rise again. Every nature, all creation says he'll rise again. Earth churning says he'll rise again. Everything that you see, even to the word of God, the only, the Holy Spirit within my bosom and other Christian believers here is pulsating now with faith that says he'll rise again. This is not the end of Levi. This is the end of his purpose on life here on earth. He'll rise again. See the whole thing. He will rise again. So what are we? What's our worry? And God looked at his garden and he plucked a few special flowers. And as he plucked those flowers, Sister Sabrina, Sister Johanna, Brother Jonathan, and Brother Levi, this gallant young man. Brother Ram said, somebody who any parent would be proud of. But he's at an eternal youth camp, as a friend of mine said. We're shocked. We were, I, I remember the moment when I, I had heard it was just, it's hard to explain. But nothing sneaks up on God. It's God's plan. God has a purpose. In his purpose, he doesn't have a backup plan. He only has his plan. And it will be fulfilled. And as we recognize that these young people, they have received a reward because of a decision they made. And we know that when you make a decision, and the Bible says that God is a faithful and true witness, and he witnesses, and he witnesses our decisions, and we reap the reward of our decisions. And today, I thought, you know, there was a decision that was made on the cross one day and where Jesus was on the cross for every one of us and there was one thief there that made a decision. He made an eternal decision and he said, Lord, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And that very act 
received a reward. And I was thinking as my wife and I were driving, we're talking a little bit. I thought what it must have been for Brother Levi and the young people to to be on that other side at that moment and have a young man come up to him and say, I was hanging on the cross next to our Lord and he remembered me. Knowing that God never forgets his promise, God keeps his word. Paul said, 2 Timothy 4 and 5, he said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Not only me, but unto all them that love his appearing. We know we spent enough time with Brother Levi to recognize he loved the appearance of the Lord. He lived. He had made a decision. and Today he is reaping the reward of a decision he made. We saw him being baptized by water. The man had the Holy Spirit in his life, the young man. And today he is... He has reaped that reward. God is a faithful and true witness. The Bible reads, For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in glory of his Father with his angels, and then we shall, or he shall, reward every man according to his works. 1 Corinthians 3. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Revelations 22. says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. And this man, thief on the cross, he said these wonderful words, and that was to re remember me, Lord. And God, the prophet of God said that when Jesus heard those words, he swung his head towards him. Because of the very action, because of his Action, God rewarded him for that. There's a, there's a faithful and a true witness. That thief was rewarded with eternal life because of the decision that he made. The word reward means a just recompense. Now, some... We reap different things based on the reward, based on our decisions. And this thief reaped eternal life, and Levi Wallace has reaped eternal life. He is not regretting his decision. He's reaping a reward that we all, truly from the bottom of our hearts, desire to obtain. And we thank God that God knew God's timing is perfect and he knows exactly what he's doing. God is not like man. Man's timing is off. Man's timing is, is missed, but God's timing is perfect. And he chose to take these young people home right at the perfect time. Some reap eternal life and some reap 
separation from God. See, a tree is known by the fruits that it bears. A tree is known by what life it brings forth. And we saw in Levi's life, he brought forth Christ. I remember talking to him and we, Lord allowed us to spend some, some time together there and we we're on a flight, I believe it was to Canada. And I just remember thinking he's, at the time I believe he was 21, 20, 21. And I just remember thinking, Lord, if I could go back, I would, I'd want to be like this young man is at that age. His testimony was real. He loved God and he wasn't ashamed of the God that he served and he reaped a reward for it. He reaped peace. He reaped, reaped e eternal life, rest. But there was a decision that he made one day and that's called repentance. A thorough, God heartfelt repentance. He reaped the benefits of a repentance. We could talk about being maybe one direction or somebody says, oh, it's this way that you're saved. But the Bible says when they asked Peter, how should we be saved? He said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And that is a decision that's made and it has eternal effects to it. It has eternal benefits to it. The gathering that Brother Levi is rejoicing. Brother, he's in a far better place than we are. He's received the peace that we're longing for, the, what we're striving for, he's received because of a decision that was made. I want to read you something here that the prophet spoke. present stage of my ministry. He spoke about two different dimensions that a believer goes to and an unbeliever goes to. He says, now the fifth dimension is where the sinner, the unbeliever, he dies and he goes to. The fifth dimension is kind of, well, a horrible dimension. Now this man, when a Christian dies, he goes to the sixth dimension and God is in the seventh. Now then, you see, the Christian, when he dies, he goes under the altar of God, right into the presence of God, under the altar, and he's at rest. To break it down, when a man, an unbeliever, when he dies, when a man has a nightmare, he's not altogether asleep, neither is he awake. He's between sleep and awake, and that's what makes him have a horrible shaking and screaming because he's not asleep, he's not awake. And to take that shows where a man goes when he dies unconverted. He's lived his time up. He's dead on earth. He cannot go into the presence of God because he does not have the blood. And he's caught. He cannot come back to earth because his time's finished here on earth and he's caught between. He's in a nightmare, see? He can't go into the presence of God to rest. He can't go back, come to earth because his time's up. He's in a nightmare. And there he stays until the day of judgment, a horrible thing to be in. But Brother Bram tells us about a believer by the name of F.F. F. Bosworth. And he talks about how he was on his deathbed there and Brother Branham went to, went to see him and he said, he said, I, I have a question for you. He said, when was the happiest time of your life? He said, right now, Brother Branham. He said, I'm ready to go into the presence of God who he had served for 60 some odd years. And we're told that before he died that his family was all gathered around there, the, the couch that he was, he was on, and, and that he stood up and walked across the floor and he shook hands with 
his mother who had gone on and converts from his meetings and he shook hands with people he had who had already passed on and received their reward and and Brother Branham said it shows that if it's hard to cross Jordan, God will send your loved ones to meet you and cross with you. There is no regret in the decision that was made for F.F. F. Bosworth, and there was no regret in the decision that was made by Brother Levi. The rewards, brother, is worth every tear. The reward is worth every heartache. The reward is worth every disappointment is to reap the reward of eternal life. Brother Bram said the psalm of life is lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime with partings leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. And Levi has certainly left footprints in many of our lives. The heartache, heartache may, maybe isn't even a, a strong enough word of what it feels like. But to the family, I can say truly that there was no rainbow until the storm came. Three Hebrew children never saw the fourth man until they went into the fire. Truly, as Brother Russell said, God has confidence in Job. Brother Branham said, God has confidence in you. There's a little song. It says, remember me. When tears are falling down, yes, remember me. When friends are not around. And when I cross over this river of Jordan, when you're calling the roll, Lord, remember me. That was, that was, I believe, that is, I believe, the cry of every believer is, Lord, remember me. When it seems like maybe life comes so much faster than what we feel we're ready. Lord, remember me. This reality of Brother Levi, the Lord, taking that little flower from us, it, it's a wake-up call. I don't believe it was just for one single purpose of taking the young man home. I believe it's a wake-up call that we could search our hearts and have the time that God has allotted us. See, Levi wrote in this journal to think that he is, that he has part, he has a part to play. And the prophet of God said, God will not take anyone home until he's finished his portion on earth. You and I, each and every one of us have a part to play. Each and every one of us are playing our part. But let's make an eternal decision. If you haven't made an eternal decision, don't wait because tomorrow may not be yours. I looked at Levi and just a strong, handsome young man, and you thought, boy, this young man, he's, he's just going to be. But God had other plans. God had other plans because he had fulfilled his purpose in life. And we, each and every one of us, have a purpose. And brother, sister, I believe that we've given this opportunity, given this, forgive the term, but given this, this shake so that we could once again search our hearts and ask God, remember me, Lord. Remember me when it seems like we're all alone or remember me when it seems like the battle's not ending. We can call on a living God because we still have the breath of life in our bodies. We're not promised to have it tomorrow. All things that are done with, 
They will pass, but only that which is done for Christ will last. The Bible says, Matthew 11, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest under your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I'll say it like the prophet said, and just once more, Elijah, just once more, Lord, he said, run for your life. It's later than you think. Run for your life. I had a, a little laminated quote that I always carried in my Bible, and Brother Levi and I were spending some time together, and I, I, I gave it to him, and Brother Bruce gave me a copy of it today. In the message of church age, he says, The word has never failed in the mouth of a believing Christian. And in this last age, it is here stronger and greater than ever in the true word bride. O oh, little flock, you little minority, hold on to the word. Fill your mouth and heart with it, and someday God will give you the kingdom. Amen. I know as we are faced with something so, what seems unreal, but it, we're faced with this reality. And every one of us are gonna have, if the Lord tarries, every one of us are gonna have to cross this bridge. But there is an opportunity to make a decision. There's an opportunity to ask God to give me eternal life. Give me something so real that death can't touch me. That all death is, it's hooked up to a buggy to bring us into the presence of God. And I know as young people, we live life carefree and we live life maybe feeling like we, we could just you know, we're going to go on for years and this is going to go on, but one day God's going to call our name. And we have to recognize we can't stop it. But our outcome, our reward is based on the decision we'll make. Levi made the right decision. The life he lived, the Christ he served. That blood is so powerful that it will remove every stain and it will clear the path to go into the presence of God. But we have to ask God for the blood. That forgiveness is there. Jesus said on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that forgiveness has been given to us. But we have to ask for that forgiveness. There has to be a, a thorough desire, a thorough repentance. Because we were all, no matter how good we think we might be, we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity and came into this world speaking lies. But there is a God that can change the outcome of what our natural birth brought onto us. There is a real God. Amen. And as we get ready to, to close this service, maybe I could ask Sister Sharon Poe, would you, would you mind just for a moment to come to the piano? She, just for a moment. And this, I'm so thankful that we are not weeping like them that have no hope. We're not sorrowing as them that have no hope. Of course, our hearts are broken. But God's plan is so much greater than our plan. He said his ways are greater than our ways. Amen. Something keeps holding me. Amen.
And I know that as Levi crossed that the Jordan River, he was not alone. There's a little song that says, I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus will be there to lead me home. And that's the reward I want. We want to make a decision to read, to receive a reward of eternal life. I don't want to be caught in a nightmare. I don't want to be caught in a place of, oh Lord, if I just had another chance, this is our chance. I thank God for what God did for Levi, for Jonathan and Sabrina and Johanna. I thank God for that. I love these young people. I love God's young people. I thank God, but you know it's not enough. He's got to do something for me too. And age has nothing to do with it. The decision we make has everything to do with it. Amen. Could I maybe ask if we would just bow our heads for a moment? It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be before the Wallace family, the neighbor family, the McGeary family. But I'm so honored to be before a living God who knows all about it right now. And as we just close our eyes together, I'd just like to take this opportunity. If there's anyone here that would just say, Lord, I just, between me and you, Lord, would you remember me? Would you slip up your hand and say, Lord, just remember me. Remember me where I'm at, Lord. God bless those hands. Anyone else, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me as tears flow. Remember me as I feel all alone. Don't forget about me, Lord. You know where I'm at. Remember me, Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, you saw the hands that went up. And sincerely, Lord, Maybe some are just wanting to rededicate their lives or some are dedicating their lives for the first time. We know life is not a game, Lord. And truly, we will reap the rewards of our decisions. Lord. God, I pray for every hand that went up, Lord. Lord, I believe you're young servant Levi would be so happy to see those hands oh there's no pride left when there's no arrogance left but just a true heart saying Lord remember me Lord I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for every sincere heart for everyone who rose their hand to you, Lord. And for those that wanted to, but just, just couldn't seem to do it. Remember us, Lord. Thank you for Brother Levi. Thank you for his life. For if someone were to say, it's too hard for a young person to live, we can truly say, there was a handful of young people that have lived it living testimony their footprints in the sands of time have spoken for themselves and we thank you for them Lord we thank you for the desires of the hearts of those that in sincerity Lord reached out to you now in Jesus name we pray oh something 
keeps holding me together. Jesus keeps holding me. Oh my Jesus keeps holding me. Thank you Lord. Allison, Lydia, Alana, it could never be the same for you. Your family wheel's broken, there's a spoke missing. It can never be the same, and it won't be in this dimension. But this is not our home. <laughs> so we look for a kingdom where Christ rules in righteousness, and the circle's not broken there. Amen. Shall we stand together? Brother Paul Dirksen was going to come and dismiss in prayer. We also have a song to sing that Levi loved and for closing, and that's this. That seems like home to me. That's where I want to be. Can you play that? Don't know. Could you put that song up on the screen? That was the last one on the program. It's a little too low, I think. on the screen there at all? Just the chorus. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll just go to the chorus for that song. That sounds like home to me, like where I want to be, there'll be no tears. That sounds like home to me, like where I want to be. Musicians also come. Well, that sounds like home to me. decision, if it would have been our plan, 
Lord, these young people would not have been taken. But Lord, your ways are above our ways. Your thoughts are only good towards us. And Father, we trust you. Lord, in our human emotion, we, our hearts are broken. We will miss their fellowship, but Lord, we look to the promise. We look to the reality of your word and we know, Lord, that one day we'll be home and that wheel is not broken. Lord, many times I've held babies in my hands to dedicate them, to thank you for sending them to the family. And we give them back to you. We dedicate them to you in Jesus' name. And we pray that they will come to that place in their lives where they give themselves to you and become a true child of God, born again. And Lord, it's comforting, Lord, to see a young man that truly gave his life to you, gave his heart to you, and that you used him. He had a purpose, and Father, he, he served it well. We thank you for the testimony that he has been and I believe will continue to be. Lord, I think of how that before life can come, seed goes into the ground it has to die yes. and father I pray even as the testimony of these four young people as they have given their lives with the testimony that they were your children they were Christians yes. I pray now that it would bring forth life I'm mindful father also of how brother Branham said so clearly that God might prepare a person for his whole life for maybe 10 minutes of ministry and Lord I do believe that the testimony of these young people, this testimony of Brother Levi was for a purpose and Lord I believe that maybe he never, maybe he never would have preached a sermon maybe he never would have sang harmony down here that wasn't your purpose for him. But Father, I believe the life that he lived and the impact now of, in what our eyes would be an untimely death, but in your eyes was at the right time. I believe that that is going to reach more people than perhaps any sermon that could have been preached. Father, I commit our brother back into your hands. I commit the family into your hands, Lord how we would love to be able to comfort them. That's why we've gathered here. We, we offer them our love and our compassion and our comfort. But you are the comfort, only you can truly comfort. And so Father, we pray, as the prophet Isaiah said, said that you would keep them in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts, his trust is in you. I pray that our eyes would be on the promise, on the faithfulness of your word, that we would just trust you in all things. Be with the family, be their comforter, be their peace. The times of sorrow and grief, make your presence known, presence known, Father. We ask these things, commit them to you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. The Wallace family so appreciates your show of love for coming and spending this time with the family. And may God reward you hundredfold for that. There's some refreshments that are behind the building here, some sandwiches and things. So we'd love for you to stay with us. If there's anybody that God's moved on your heart and you'd like special prayer, you just come down front. There's some brothers to sure meet you here. We'd be honored to pray with you. God richly bless you as you go. Amen. Love one another. Well, that sounds like home to